Hello everyone. Good evening. I hope everyone is doing great. So today we are going to learn Pega Process Extender for, for Salesforce Lightning. And in this topic, we are going to learn about the connectivity and authentications, which is episode one. In the subsequent sessions, we might learn a more. But before we but before we start the sessions, we'll just quickly learn that why what is the need of this integration, right? So basically. What this component does is that it, this component can be installed at the Salesforce side and provides the same functionality what we do in Pega, like viewing the cases, creating cases, searching cases. So these kind of a very common functionality, performing the cases from the Salesforce only. And now you can ask a question that why we need the same Pega functionality within the Salesforce. Okay. This is required because the, the agent desktop, the, the persons who works okay, in the front end of any a bank or any industry, right? They don't need to navigate to, to multiple system. Like, you know that for wherever the approval process is required, okay, for that kind of a things, Pega is used, okay? So now if Pega is used for that approval system, okay? And for the same client, okay? If the client is calling for something, okay? So the agent desktop doesn't have to navigate to different systems. He can take actions from the Salesforce only. Like let's say you are inquiring about your pending request. So instead of navigating back to the Pega systems, he can see your informations within the Salesforce only. Uh, let's say uh, like if I talk in the Pega terms, okay, my assignment is displaying within the Salesforce only and he can provide the informations. If you want to create a case also, like basically you want to raise ad, ad exchange request or money transfer request he or she can do it from the salesforce only so basically develop once okay in pega and use it okay or embed it within the salesforce okay and it can be actions can be taken from the salesforce only for that purpose this component has been used now let's come back to our the the core topic that how this works okay so if you see in this diagram what happens is that pega provides a lightning web component package okay and the package will be installed in the Salesforce site, Salesforce organization. Now what happens is that most of the code which gets executed right from the browser, so you can see here the Pega process extender running inside the Salesforce browser. Okay. Uh, so let's say you want to display your uh, my cases okay, or the my assignment. So most of the code okay, will be there okay, in the JavaScript which will run in the browser. Now how it will interact in this like interact with the pega system right because when you're trying to see your my cases right how it will fetch the cases how the the authentications will happen from both the system so that we are going to learn so what happens is uh what but before uh, like let's let's uh take a step back and see that when we download this package right how the package looks like so if you go here you can search in the google okay pega and salesforce extender here you can I get a download button or you can, can download it and now as I was talking these are the core feature these components provides like my assignments means we can see the my assignments okay what we see in Pega exactly in the Salesforce for that user let's say you are logging with user A or the John Doe if you're logging with John Doe in, in Pega you can see five assignment and same assignment you can see in the Salesforce also then related case related case is nothing based on whatever you want to fetch the cases like basically you can call a database with some parameter then create case create case from record we will learn in the subsequent session then get next work we all know and then search cases so these are the core feature which pega provides and that can be done from the salesforce only you don't have to come each time within the pega if you integrate this integrate this two system when you download this right what pega provides is pega provides a package and that package looks like this okay once you download and unzip it it will look like this so the first thing is the document okay inside the document you'll see some readme file and release notes the second one is the jwt so this is the package which you need to install at the pega side not the salesforce side okay and what this package has that it has the client registration client identity and client mapping i'll show you so once you install this one in the pega side it will look something like this so you'll get the with the name pega lwc and this is like client registration inside that and this authentication mechanism use the grant type called jwt bearer okay so you can see that jwt bearer has been selected and then we have added pega lwc as entity mapping and then again the token processing profile pega lwc okay so this one you need to install at the pega side 
another important things which we use in the Pega site is the trust store. So you need to upload the trust certificate in the Pega site, which will be generated by the Salesforce system. Okay, then these two systems can handshake and provide the connectivity or the, the connectivity will be successful. So this is the another thing which you need to provide. You can see that Pega LWC.jks and it, this will be generated from the Salesforce site. Okay, I don't have a live system if I would have live system I could I can show that how it can be done in Salesforce also but wait but if you're working with any in any organization see if you want to integrate this one definitely Salesforce team can help so as again let's come back to this folder so this folders provide the connectivity details or the authentications details okay so the client registrations rule identity mapping rules and then also the the certificates you, which you need to install okay now this this is the core folder okay so if you unzip it you can open the, that in the visual studio okay let me see i have already opened that one pega underscore lwc so this is the package this package looks like this and it has all the components okay to so under lwc you can see that assignment is there create work is there and create work from record is there so basically for each component it has a, a separate a package okay but you don't have to look all those things what you need to look is okay for the authentications mechanism inside this uh, main default right so if you see this one package under force app main default you'll find under classes you'll find pega jwt util dot cls so this is the the main class which gets installed at the server side in the salesforce the rest everything works from the client side so this is the first file which gets invoke okay and then we'll again come back to here that yes let's let me expand that okay so here once that let's see you're trying to uh, refresh the page or you are navigating to page where you have embedded that um, so my assignment okay uh, component okay within the salesforce now what will happen is that the first thing which will happen is it will try to call the generate access token api okay so in the pega we have a uh, in the Pega, we have a generate access token API. So if I show you, right, if you go to the services, we'll find that. If you go to the services, let's go to the services, integration, services, and we can search with the token API. If you search with token, we'll find that. So you can see that we have the token API or 2.0 token API. So the moment like from the uh, a browser, right, you try to invoke anything, okay, the first thing which will happen is it will try to call generate access token, okay. And from where it gets invoked, it gets invoked from this util class. So this is the util class, okay. Now the question is this API, what this API takes as a parameter, okay. So that I have defined here, if I go to the next slide, so this API, the first API which I'm talking is that, okay, the Pega token API, it takes authorizations none, it doesn't need any authorizations. But if you're working any for any client, right, and where you're using a gateway layer, maybe you need to use the gateway and gateway layer author authorizations, but here for this API, the authorizations will be none, if you're using the Pega out of the box. What other parameter, the other parameter is client ID, secret code, grant type, okay, so here the client ID will be again, uh, you'll get this value from your, your this one, Pega LWC client registration. So you'll get the client ID, client secret. You need to download it once you install this one. And then JWT bearer, JWT bearer you can see. So this is the value you need to pass, URN and then colon IETF. This, this is the whole value you need to pass. So this is the kind of a default value for JWT bearer grant type. Let's come back and then the secret code and then JWT assertion. Now, what is this assertion, right? So what happens is, okay, this token, right? In the token, you need to pass the subject, which is the user ID for the creations of requester details. Because when you're working from the Salesforce, right? As I said that a user A or the user John Doe has logged in in the Salesforce, right? And the same user also exists in the Pega, but he is trying to access his information, okay, from the Salesforce but he should see the same information. So in that case, you need to form his requester, okay, through the API, okay. Then only he can access his information. He don't want to access any other system, uh, other like cases. Let's say 
if John Doe is logging to the pig and seeing five cases as a my assignment, he should see the same information. So the only way is, okay, that the requester should be formed with his name. Okay, so in the JWT assertions, what we do is, okay, this util class, what it does, it it takes few things, okay, and creates a, a encrypted JWT. I can say that JWT token. So JW assertion, JWT assertion is nothing. It's an encrypted token. Okay. Now within that, what it contains, so you can see this one generate bearer token. So it will have the AUD. Okay. So audience and then issuer and then certificate name. Okay. So inside that will have, and then also it will have the subject and few other things. Okay. And then finally, what it will do, it will take all those data and create a JWT token. So if I show you here, let me see this, this is the certificate name, audience, issuer, somewhere we'll see this one. So here, this is the exchange token. Okay, basically we are trying to make an API call. So here you can see the client ID, okay, client secret and then grant type and then assertion. Now this assertion, okay, so somewhere we are generating this JWT token. So if you see this one, okay, what all things we're taking in generating. So audience, issuer, okay, issuer is that the system you can give pega applications and then audience is I think the same client ID if I'm not wrong. So somewhere here we can see the audience. Let me see. Yeah, so issuer and audience. Audience is the applications and issuer you can give the same client ID. Okay, or you can give any value. Usually, whatever you will give inside your the Pega, the same value you need to pass it from the Salesforce. Okay, so issuer is the client ID and then audience is the, the applications URL you can give. So this is the two things. And then apart from this one, the set subject. So subject could be the user ID, okay, or it could be the user ID, anything. So this value should exactly match with the operator ID value. Okay, whatever you have. Okay. And then the first name and last name. So this first name, last name is not mandatory and you can set additional claims also. And then again, like here, the certificate, which I was talking with the same certificate, you need to apply the same certificate and generate a JWT token. Now, when you encrypt this one with the certificate, you need the trust store at the Pega side to decrypt this token. Okay. And using this subject okay you will form the user context okay um, for the subsequent api call like after this one like after this uh, uh, token api you may be calling the dx api to pull the the my assignment okay so now when you make a call so again let's come back to our this one okay so client id secret code grant type and assertion so again like let me explain assertion again so assertion is nothing but it's a jwt encrypted token with the certificate which is in, which is kind of a created within the salesforce and then the the details what would you will have inside the jwt is the subject issuer audience and additional claims whatever you want to put inside whatever now what we'll do okay once this request details will come pega will apply the same client registration okay and verify these details, decrypt the JWT assertions, compare with these rules, okay? Because within these rules, if you see, right, it will compare this issuer, it will compare this audience, okay? It will compare from the previous rule, right? And here we have marked it that we are trying to log in operator identifications using claim. If you want to do with the custom claim, that also you can do. And here also it will verify that which, uh, like, uh, grant type. Now here you can see that we have used the trust store for the security using this trust store. It will decrypt the token and it will log in with the same the subject. Okay. Subject or the user ID. And after that, okay. Once it is successful, successful means it, it like we got the request. Okay. We had decrypted the token. We identified the user details okay, using the subjects. Then it will generate a, a, another token from the Pega side. Okay, and then it will return it back to the Salesforce system. So let's go back to our this screen. So the generate access token. Okay, then here you can see the generate bearer token Apex code. Okay, so this is what I was talking about the JWT util class. Okay, once it will try to access from the browser, it will try to get the token. Okay, to go to generate the token, it will go to the Apex class. Okay, so JWT that CLS I was talking that we say in this uh, in the Salesforce side we call Apex code or Apex class. Now Apex class will make exchange bearer token code okay which I showed you okay with the, the, the parameters which I was showing client ID secret code grant type and then JWT bearer as a grant type. Then 
what will happen it will go to the pega you can see that pega server is there using public keys to validate the signature pega will validate that decrypt the informations check the user id if the that user is there or not okay so if the if the john doe is trying to access the salesforce system okay the john doe operator id should be there in the pega okay either with the email or whatever you are setting in the subject as a claim now what it will happen then finally it will generate an access token okay what you can see that four okay the four is basically the re return or the response of that the token api so the token api will respond with the jwt token along jw token which will have the informations about the user it, it will have the informations about the operator access group and everything now you have the token now you want to make actual call okay actual call for the data let's say you want to call for the uh, call for that uh, my assignment list right so basically that's the dx api okay so in the dx api in the package you need to select oauth 2.0 and then as the authorizations okay so now if you're making a call okay after that a dx api call so let's say you are doing a just a get okay get data page okay get data so in that get data page you need to pass the data page name if you have any parameter you need to pass okay basically for the my assignments pega will call uh, d underscore my work list or work basket and then for the authorization okay now you need to pass the response okay the response the, the, this is the fourth one okay the fourth point whatever the response you have got it so you can see that here in the sixth in the fifth we like fourth we got the access token we return it to browser okay uh, so first we got to the server then now server responded to the browser that now here it is the access code now you can make actual api call to display uh, assignments or create case okay so in the sixth, you can see that when we are making an API call, we are passing that access token as authorizations. And in the sevens, we are responding with the data and that data will be displayed. So this is how the whole authentications process works. So basically it works on the OAuth 2.0, okay, where it first calls a Pega token API. Once we get the token API response as a JWT token, the same JWT token can be used for this, uh, like will be used in the subsequent APIs to call the DX API. And the, in the DX API package, we have to select OAuth 2.0 in the packs, and then it will go up. So this is it for this session. Okay, uh, watch this video. Okay, try to understand if you are implementing in your in your application. Okay. And if you need any help, you can reach out to me. I can definitely help you with, help you with this. And if you need further sessions, okay, that also I can help. So that's it for this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.